So after running the ultimate Planet Zoo survey with our fantastic community about whether or not to use Planet Zoo mods on a channel, it became clear that opinions were quite divided. This inspired me to create a video all about Planet Zoo mods to inform myself and the community a bit more with things like are they worth it, what are the risks, why use mods or why not, and what issues might you encounter when diving into the world of Planet Zoo mods. In this short series, I'm joined by the lovely Leaf, a well-known modder and Planet Zoo YouTuber who's here to provide all the insights you need to know before diving into mods. So if you're curious to learn more, then definitely stay tuned to find out. Hey everyone, my name is The Lady Designer and we're back with part two of our modding series where I talk with Leaf about the fascinating world of Planet Zoo mods. Now, originally this wasn't meant to be a series, but our conversation was so packed with valuable information that I decided to split it into several parts. So in this episode, we're diving into the topic of new habitat animals and species. If you enjoyed this series, please consider to leave a like at this video and make sure to subscribe to both mine and Leafa's channel with the link in the description. Now, without further talking, let's jump into it. We're moving on to new species. New species. Oh, what? <laughs> That's amazing. That's by Just Goron. Insane piece right there. I try to make these like little things cute. Oh, I love that. So all new species have their own unique Zoopedia. <gasps> they have their own unique, like you can buy them. They don't replace animals anymore. I want to make that extremely clear because someone asks me like every month, oh, do these like replace the animals still? No, these are entirely new animals. So it's just like if Planet Zoo release a DLC and you go into the market, you see those animals in your market now. It's just like that. Okay, you just have to tell me because I think it was a question of you to Frontier on Twitter saying like please remove the maximum amount of animals to have. Oh my gosh, yes. And they removed that, right? Yeah, that was one of the best days of my life, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Yeah. So they removed the species cap, which was around 200 species. Uh, so eventually after time goes on, we would see like oh, we can only keep so many animals installed at once. Mm -hmm. Frontier eventually removed that. Yes. Which was incredible for us modders because more people would want to check out our mods. And it's incredible for the user as well because after support ends, mods are going to be the only way to add new content to your game. Exactly. So this is the musk ox. These guys are a bovine from, I believe, North America and Europe. So they're going to be found around like the Arctic region and such like that. This mod is made by Jen. She is going to be making a lot of the mods that we see here today. This is a highly requested animal for Planet Zoo because of its prevalence in Zoo Tycoon 2. It looks so good. So a lot of people really fell in love with it because of like those very unique horns. Uh -huh. It looks kind of like a buffalo that lives in the Arctic. Just a really, really stellar creature. Yeah, so we can also look at the Zoopedia, like you just said. Mm -hmm. Zoopedia. So every single animal has unique traits, has unique factors that fill into filling out the gameplay. So you can see that the continents it's found in is like North America, Asia, and Europe. So it's only going to use biome plants from those. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, please don't like yell at me for this, but I don't really care about the maps. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just not something I put into my mods because it takes a lot of time. Uh, I'll put it in eventually. But I code <laughs> I code mods for Jen, so I just make sure that they work. Uh, that's my main priority. Oh, look but at that But you can picture. see that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so they dumb. all have unique Zoopedias. They all have unique needs. They even have some of them unique interspecies enrichments. So you can make these really cool mixed habitats that these animals will feel enriched from, mm -hmm. which is really, really fun. So you can see that they all ha also have like full Zoopedias. So they all have fun facts. They all have like, you know, their own needs, their own desires, their own aspirations, their own dreams, all stuff like that. That's so cool. The only thing that I do notice mm -hmm. is that size and everything is at least for me I have no yeah. idea what it says <laughs> so right over here the habitat six feet and I'm like oh, okay yeah you're working with Americans over here <laughs> yeah exactly uh, the metric system hasn't really found its way over here yet it's funny that it takes that as well so mm -hmm. but it's like a little side note like 
eventually my goal is to update every single one of my mods to take into account like the uk and like um you know all the different regional differences mm -hmm. between everything but my main priority is just getting people the animals that they want yeah. if someone can't figure out the way just convert it i guess I don't yeah know. exactly exactly oh look this little one yeah most of these animals we're seeing today have unique babies so this is a baby muskox they also <laughs> have sexual dimorphism so the females will look different from the males just a really super awesome animal right it's, here yeah it, i'm really impressed by by these animals so far like also the remasters they they look just stunning, really. They really look so good. This is the Jeronuk. These guys are found in Eastern Africa, around like Ethiopia, Somalia, stuff like that. They are a gazelle known for their extremely long neck. These are just so pretty. Right? <gasps> so this one is made by Narwhaler. He is at the work that he does. Always such realistic interpretations of animals and just really, really beautiful models at that too. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is insane. Look at mm. this. The baby's so <laughs> adorable. So Oh my goodness, they are. So I want to bring up, while we're looking at the Jaranuk, the possibilities of custom animations and custom sounds, because a lot of people know this animal for being able to stand on its hind legs yeah. and eat from trees. Very, very unique um, behavior from these guys. Yeah. Unfortunately, custom animations, while they are possible now, which is super cool. Yeah. Uh, recent breakthrough with that they're extremely difficult so it's not exactly easy for people to do but we're trying to figure out like just how best to do that but eventually that'll happen custom sounds too unfortunately we can't add new sounds to the game which is a little bit of a setback but when we're working with animals like the jaranuk which is just a different type of gazelle mm -hmm. they're not really going to make any unique calls so it doesn't really matter but it's it would just be cool to see eventually unfortunately definitely we're kind of spread thin right now. So those will come eventually, but just not now. Yeah, yeah. So it, those are the things that are still being worked on and obviously really high in your guys' uh, wish list as well of modders to be able to uh, mm -hmm. change everything <laughs> and to be able to add those things. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> so this is the dick dick. Um, I hope I don't get demonetized for saying that. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it's your it's language. My channel. So really. <laughs> So these guys, they're, it's a Dutch name too, which is very fun. Is it Af is it not African? It's not African, no. So these guys are named by the Dutch who kind of like discovered these animals. Oh, really? Well, not you, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not getting into that whole <laughs> stuff right now. But these guys are one of the smallest antelopes in Africa. We just recently got these guys at our local zoo, which is so fun to have. Uh -huh. uh, they have a very unique nose. Yes. Uh, so it kind of looks like a um, kind of looks like a trunk on them. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, they're just super adorable. They look so funny. Yeah, that's really it. I want to throw these guys in here because they're so cute yes they are they have like little mohawks too and i think they have the little well i wanted to say bongo sounds but <laughs> the more i play this game the more i notice oh they use it for the niala as well oh they yep. use it for this mm -hmm. one as well um i can't stand that but <laughs> I'm gonna use that as a segue into talking about enrichment for these animals. Uh -huh. So every single animal, every single mind animal has enrichment. Yeah. That's another thing that we want to take into account because a lot of people like to care for these animals. So whatever an animal is based on, and it's always said in their mod description, so it will always say what the animal is based on. Unfortunately, if you actually go into your enrichment tab in like the build by right now, yeah. and if you start to type in this one, for example, is based on the Thompson's Gazelle. So if you type in Gazelle. Oh, Gazelle, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you just switch off blueprints, you could see all the enrichment that this animal would use. And then you could use that as a guide. There is oh, progress yes. in trying to get these guys their own way. So if you type in like Dick Dick or something like that, yeah. it should be able to bring up all their corresponding enrichment. Unfortunately, that's not the case right now. But again, as modders, we're trying to find new breakthroughs. It's the small little details, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to find new breakthroughs breakthroughs as like often as we can yeah exactly I, I don't think that is like 
a huge issue of course for yeah. people that like to use this but it's good to mention because i wouldn't even have thought of that if you didn't mention it i would be be like <laughs> playing with these mods and i'm like oh wait what can i dig dig oh no exactly yeah <laughs> Good to know that you can find that information at the website of the mod where you download it. Mm -hmm. Moving on from here, we have the Olive Baboon. Oh my goodness, look at those guys. These guys are very cool. So these are <laughs> actually one of the original Zoo Tycoon 1 animals. <gasps> so a lot of people have been requesting this one because of its prevalence in Zoo Tycoon 1. Yeah. And because we don't have any new monkeys in the game. Believe me, I am crying about it to, to sleep every single night. I hate you for that. Yes, I I'm know. sorry. <laughs> I will put but, up the Twitter post. Oh, put, put up my tweet, please, yesterday. please. Let, let the people crucify <laughs> me. So these guys are really awesome. They're found all over Africa. So they're just a really, really unique baboon species. Very common in zoos across the world. And yeah, there's just not much else to say about that. I have never seen this one before. Like for me, it's a completely... The animation? Uh, no, the olive or baboon. The, the animal. Yes. Um, like what? So... They're really cool. They're related to like the Hamadryas baboon. They're slightly related to the mandrill. We use the mandrill as a base for this one. Yeah, I thought so. Now, the cool thing is the mandrill does not have a tail. So we actually added a tail on this model. So you can see it's a little bit stiff, unfortunately. I, I did see more things that the mandrill didn't have. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not <laughs> going to mention that. <laughs> oh, please, no. But I was like, That's... oh, that looks more realistic than the most oh, yeah. of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> I have a remaster for the proboscis monkey that does the same thing. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I didn't throw that for you to check out. But yeah, these guys are super cool and just a really awesome way to bring a lot more diversity to your savanna habitats. Absolutely. And again, they also have interspecies enrichment. So if you want to pop into the Zoopedia and check that out, they could be alongside a lot of these different animals. It's just super cool to see that. Really, really awesome UI too. I like it that all of the Zoopedia information is updated. Mm. I don't know. I just so much appreciate that. It adds such a different layer to new <gasps> species 100? too. Yeah, they <laughs> get pretty, pretty <laughs> crazy troops. <laughs> oh my goodness. Interspecies. So oh, yeah, there's wow. a whole bunch of fun facts. And then you can make all these big habitats with these guys. We um Usually I kind of throw in what makes sense, what I've seen in real life zoos every so often, and kind of just stuff building off of that. I love that. Yeah, it's just really fun. So moving, we're like in a whole Africa streak right over here. Because, uh -huh, like, yes, you can tell. We have the most amount of animals from Africa, but it also feels like we're missing the most amount of animals from Africa. So this is one of everyone's favorites. <laughs> this is the common eland. This one's made by Mark. It's made by, I believe, uh, good boy. It's made by Nick and coded by myself. It's just a really, really solid hoofstock animal. It's one of the biggest antelopes out there. And what's unique about them is they're kind of dewlap. So it's kind of <laughs> like the thing on their neck that's kind of poking out a little bit. And they're very unique spiral horns. They're not exactly fully spiral, but it has that little twist at the beginning, which looks super cool. Yeah, it does. Mm. They look so good as well. Wow. They have four or five different variants variants in here. Uh, I set up the habitat to showcase a few of them. Uh, there's a little oh, baby, of course, this. just looking super adorable. Oh, the color variation is so nice as well. Right. Oh, fantastic. So there's a few different subspecies being represented in here. So there's like the Livingston's eland. There's like the base common eland. Those are usually called type species and just a whole bunch of other different colors and stuff. A little tail. Right? <laughs> so adorable oh look so there's <gasps> one of my favorites it has some wow. really intense contrast just a really really beautiful model altogether. oh it is mm. oh wow i love the fur textures as well mm -hmm. like it's a little bit shiny oh it's a pity that it's like not in the sunlight right now can you rotate no it's not <laughs> Oh, wow. But yeah, they're just a really, really gorgeous animal. It really is. Oh my goodness. This is such an impressive, beautiful animal as well. Mm. Wow. This one is probably one of my favorite animals of all time because of how goofy oh. they look. This is the <laughs> golden snub nosed monkey. So they are based off of the proboscis monkey. So they will use like all those animations, all their enrichment. <gasps> but this one is so cool. It's made by Monsoon. He is exceptional 
professional at doing like your weird, your funky animals. Animals that really aren't too common in zoos or in captivity, but he just finds them super interesting. This one in particular. I think it's only held in like four or five zoos. These are so good. Right? Oh my goodness. So they have this very iconic blue face and this really gorgeous golden fur. Wow. Mm. Oh my gosh. Look at the textures here on the back as well. It's probably one of my most favoritely made mods because of how beautiful that fur is. I can't imagine. I, I, I'm so amazed by the high level of details of these mods. Mm -hmm. They look so freaking good. Even the babies. Oh, look at, look this at them. One. <laughs> <laughs> and all these little hairs sticking out. <laughs> oh, wow. They are fantastic. Right. Do we have more color variants in here? There are not. So unfortunately, there's only one color variant in here. These guys don't really represent like a whole wide of a range of colors, if that makes sense. But there are different species. So maybe eventually he can make like the other kinds of snub nose monkeys. Oh, that would be so cool. Here is the fun one. <gasps> this is a shoe bill. It's so high on my list. Right? These guys are iconic. Have you seen one? I've never seen one in real life, oh, but man. I know them. I, I, I've, I've seen videos on YouTube and every time mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> They're just as impressive in real life as they are in pictures. It's so cool. Yes. So this one is made by Narwhaler. It's using the red crown crane as a base rig. And it's just incredible the amount of detail he was able to squeeze in here. It's, it's gorgeous. Uh, uh, wait, I need to see one walk. But mm -hmm. this is ridiculous. And the baby's super adorable, too. It looks like a little oh my goose goodness. or something. Oh, wait, wait. I need... Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at right? this. It has <laughs> covered <laughs> leave it. Look how happy it looks. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. They're like simultaneously happy and like, oh my god, I he's gonna murder me. Like they have that same look. Yeah, exactly. They are such mysterious creatures. It, wait, are you seriously going to use that? <laughs> Is this the animation? Because I have never in the four years that we have Planet Zoo seen any animation with this thing. I think they just look at it. <laughs> Okay. Because it's a whole bunch of mirrors. That's something that a lot of real life zoos do too, is use mirrors for enrichment because animals don't really have mirrors in the wild. Uh -huh. So it's just a really cool way to engage them with other animals that kind of look like them. Yeah. Oh man, I got... Oh. This, this animal just looks so fantastic. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It really is. I'm so impressed by everything. <laughs> now, have you ever heard of the echidna? No. Okay. So it's <gasps> that little blob walking around right now. These guys <laughs> are the only other type of monotreme besides the platypus. So these are one of the only mammals to lay eggs. Oh my goodness. So they are really adorable. They are. They're based on the aardvark. Oh. And there's they're so much cool stuff about this animal that I could say. Their feet, their back feet are facing backwards. Uh, and that helps them out with digging. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. But also, like, the textures. It's Yeah, that... <laughs> like, I've never seen anything before. Those quills are a pain to make. Yes. And when Jen made this, I was super happy because it looked incredible. Like, it's probably one of the best mods out there on a technical standpoint alone because of how intense it is to make. Yes, this must have taken forever. This this is crazy. They could also use a burrow, which is great. Oh, that's amazing. Unfortunately, they don't lay eggs, but the platypus also doesn't lay eggs or the birds don't lay eggs. Say. So I guess it's <laughs> not really not really a huge loss in there. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah, it's just a really really awesome animal, probably one of my favorites in real life. And yeah, just really solid guy. It's fantastic. Do we have a little baby in here? So these guys, unfortunately, Jen kind of left the modding scene. Oh. Uh, it was just getting a little bit too intense for her. Oh. So she left me a whole bunch of her files. And this is one that didn't have a baby file with it. And I honestly said, hey, listen, I 
can't do this justice. I can't make a baby out of this. Oh, I can't imagine. So essentially it uses... Oh, that's so sad to hear. It is sad. We do miss her deeply. But with this one, really good transition too, because there is a thing of juvenile scaling. Uh, so essentially as a baby is born, there is a little mod file now that allows animals to change their scale as they grow up. So the echidna has this, where the baby will eventually change size as it grows up until it becomes an adult. Uh -huh. So normally in Planet Zoo, the babies would stay one size all the time. Yeah. Meanwhile, with this mod, they will slowly but surely grow up as time goes on. But ha do we have that mod in here? Did you gave me that mod? We do. So it's built it's built into the animals themselves. Oh, that's so nice. So we won't really be able to see it like, you know, in the video itself because it's so um it, it takes a while. Yeah. But it's just a tiny little feature in here that adds just a little bit more role playing experience. That is super nice. So future lead here again with my personal conclusion so far, I am overwhelmingly positive when it comes down to Planet Zoomod so far. The animals we've seen throughout this series so far have been truly stunning. So that for me is a very big plus to use mods. However, we haven't discussed all the potential risks of using mods, which we will do in the next episodes. And sadly, uh, I do have to admit already, not all animal mods are as polished as the ones we've seen today, especially when it comes down to aquatic mods and the animations. But we will have a look at them in the next episode, where we will also dive more into the risk and what to pay attention to when using mods. So definitely stay tuned for that video. So feel free to share your thoughts on this episode in the comments down below. And we would also love to know which animal is still at the top of your wish list for Planet Zoo. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing to both mine and Leaf's channel with the link in the description. We would really appreciate it and we are very excited to see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye guys!